This episode of Transformation Talk is brought to you by our friends at FNX. FNX is committed to creating innovative supplements of the highest quality that provide focus for a productive morning, energy to thrive all day, performance supplements to reach new goals, unique sleep and recovery formulas to support any sport, and healthy supplements to support an active lifestyle for years to come. Go to fnxfit.com for all your supplement needs. Use code GETRIGHT and save 15% off your order. Hey everyone, welcome back to Freestyle Friday. Mickey Campbell here, and uh, as I've told you guys before, we're doing two shows a week on Transformation Talk now. The first one comes out every Tuesday. That's Transformation Talk Tuesday. On that one, I'll try to be a, a little more serious and in, in, in talking about transformation. Um, as you guys know, um, I feel like it's my life purpose to help everybody and anybody that's looking to transform their body, mind, and spirit and get a happier, healthier, um, better quality of life achieve that goal. And uh, so I put out content every Tuesday um, on things that I think will help that. And where do I feel like I get that from is I've been through my own transformation myself um, and doing the, the same things that I share on that show and the same things that I share in my book, Make It Happen. Um, if you want to read more about that journey, it is available on Amazon. Just look up Make It Happen by Mickey Campbell on Amazon. And you can also uh, I have a free ebook, Transformation Secrets, that you can look at on any of my social media outlets, and you'll find a link for that. And you just uh, shoot me your name and email address where you want that sent to, and I'll send you um, 35 secrets that I compiled through my personal journey and the research that I've done over the last decade in helping literally hundreds of people achieve transformation success. So that ebook is free and uh, available through the links on my social media sites. And if I remember, I'll try to put one. Um, with this episode, but if not, you can find me on uh, all the outlets. And if you just scroll down my page a little bit, I'm sure you'll find a link to that. So, having said that, that's the Tuesday show, Transformation Talk Tuesday, and today is Freestyle Friday. Again, Freestyle Friday being um, a show that I do just freely, talking about just different things, um, trying to uh, entertain you guys a little bit with some of the stories from my past as far as my wrestling career, um, you know, just whatever. Um, lately, I've been kind of going through my wrestling career. So if you look back on the last couple of episodes of Freestyle Friday, it started with how I entered into professional wrestling um, in my first match and then uh, uh, our meeting with our first big time promoter. So uh, <clears throat> one of the requests for a story that's been made um, from some uh, uh, from my, my partner and uh, one of the best friends I've ever had in my life, Ricky Regal, asked me to uh, tell a, a story. He commented on one of the episodes that I put out and wanted me to tell the prison story. So um, today's gonna kind of incorporate that story for you guys and it let you know uh, exactly what he meant by that. But I'll start with us um, and some of the guys that used to wrestle with us wanted to hear the story again too. Um, so hopefully it entertains you as much as it entertains them and it entertained me as I was living it and looking back on it, the, the memories and the laughs that we had. So I'm gonna to try to do it as much justice as I possibly can and start with us um, meeting uh, Daryl Van Horn and him becoming the manager of the Lightning Express. He uh, came to, uh, back when uh, we were working for the IWA um, and Bobby Holbrook's the first big time wrestling promoter I talked about meeting. He uh, worked out a deal with the fabulous Moolahs camp out of Columbia, South Carolina, and some of her guys would come down and do Bobby's shows. And, and most of those guys were um, what was known back then as job guys for um, World Championship Wrestling and the, at that time, World Wrestling Federation, which is now the WWE. Most of those guys um, were what we what were referred to in that era as job guys. And what, what that meant was they were the guys that um, would go on TV and really do a really good job of making some of the more main event superstars look good and have really good matches to help them further their um, pecking order or uh, if you will on the card so that it would help develop their storyline for the TV show so that people would come out and want to support um, the bigger shows that were done in uh, venues that they actually sold tickets for. So um, these job guys were very talented individuals. I think a lot of all of them um, that I met along the way and uh, really enjoyed some of the times that we shared together. But anyway, Daryl Van Horn rode down to a show um, with a couple of these guys and uh, ended up in the locker room. He was gonna be their manager, but he saw us 
um, performed during our match and thought that his character would fit our uh, tag team way more than it would fit the tag team that he had actually rode from Columbia to wherever we were in Western North Carolina, Northeast Georgia that night. So he approached us and started talking to us about managing us and uh, one thing led to another. We uh, ended up somewhere at a party and uh, he and a couple of other guys uh, pretty much decimated a cake by um, doing real vile things to that cake, but um, that's a whole nother story in itself that I, I can't really go into right now. <laughs> Anyways, they had this cake and it was supposed to be a female. So Daryl Van Horn and a couple of other guys, they, they were just all over that cake, if you will. And anyway, he, he started talking to us and we thought it'd be a good fit. And um, we were young still too. And uh, he was a, a couple of years, our senior, if you will. And he was more comfortable having had experience in booking bands and different things from his past and getting us more bookings with other federations and, and things. So we ended up getting together and coming up with uh, the Lightning Express managed by Daryl Van Horn. And that, that was a great time for us. Um, Ricky and myself, Daryl was uh, very instrumental in getting us some additional bookings and more exposure and uh, even the opportunity to go to Gene Anderson's school later on and, and train there some and help us to uh, learn more about our craft and learn more about the business. And um, he went on to advance his career um, in a different level and we're still all friends, um, thank goodness. So anyways, that's how he became our manager and we ended up getting booked at the Atlanta Metropolitan. So we're gonna rewind now, I'm 19 years old. Um, Ricky's 19, we're both working uh, full-time jobs in wrestling. Uh, we were kind of what you would refer to as a weekend warrior. We'd wrestle some Friday nights and most every Saturday night and some Sunday afternoons somewhere around Western North Carolina, Northeast Georgia and Northwestern South Carolina. So um, we're both working full-time jobs and we're really, you know, hoping that we're, one day we're going to get this big break. So Daryl calls us one day and he says, fellas, G, sit down. Are you sitting down? Because I got some great news for you, G. You're going to love it. So I'm like, what is it, man? What is it? Ricky and I happen to be together and we're both sitting there and uh, we're on one of those old, you know, big old house phones, just back before cell phones. So he says, uh, I got us a, a guaranteed booking, G's. We're going to get paid. We're going to work at Atlanta Metropolitan. And Ricky and I were like, oh my goodness, man, that's, that's incredible. The Atlanta Metropolitan, that's got to be big, bro. That's got to be big. What's the payday? What's the guarantee? <laughs> He said, I got us 50 bucks. I said, 50 bucks? Man, that's all right, 50 bucks a piece and we get to work at Atlanta Metropolitan. That's awesome, dude. He said, no, bro, 50 bucks for the three of us. <laughs> but gee, it's the Atlanta Metropolitan. Come on now, don't worry about the money. Don't be like that. We're pulling it off in the Atlanta Metropolitan, baby. So of course, Ricky and I were like, heck yeah, man, let's go, let's go. He said, there's one catch. We said, what's that? He said, uh, we have to ride with the ring crew. So what do you mean we have to ride with the ring crew? You know, that's part, the most fun part of the trip is, is the road and us having fun together. And he says, uh, no, man, no, the Atlanta Metropolitan, they're real strict on their parking. It's a big city, you know? So it's not like Lawrence down there where you boys can just park in a field. He, we all got to ride together to save space so we have more fans that can show up for the show, man, so more people can see us. We can sell more gimmicks. We can make more money. Come on, G, think ahead, think out the box. So, <laughs> of course, we were like, all right, man, that's fine, we'll ride with the ring crew. So we show up and, and, and we meet with the ring crew in Westminster, South Carolina. And uh, it's basically a box van <laughs> with the ropes and the turnbuckles and everything in a box van and it's pulling a trailer. And so we're all kind of piled up, us and like five other guys are piled up in the back of the box van and <laughs> sitting on turnbuckles or whatever, riding down the road, you know, going down 85, getting snatched all over the place. But uh, it's all cool, you know, because we're going to do the Atlanta Metropolitan. And if this only sacrifice we got to make is to ride in this box van uncomfortable for a couple of hours, to be able to work at the Atlanta Metropolitan at 19 years old and got a guarantee to boot, I'm going to have gas money to get back from Westminster, South Carolina, and maybe even enough to buy expensive beer, which was $10 a 12-pack or whatever. <laughs> Otherwise, it was like the $4.99 bush light for us. So... At a night, as a 19 year old kid, that's kind of where my priorities were and just, you know, having a good time and we're doing Atlanta Metropolitan. So we sucked it up and we made the best out of it. We're cutting jokes in the van going down the road. And um, back then, a lot of the old time 
wrestlers uh, spoke a, a certain language, kind of a, a, a language that was referred to as carny. And we thought we were cool because we knew it, you know. <laughs> so we spoke it every time we got a chance. And, and uh, the three of us, we're sitting back there and we're carrying on this conversation. And the, the guy that was uh, in the front seat riding the promoter drove the, the van that was pulling the trailer. And the guy that was in the front seat talking to him, he turns around and he says, ain't no need you boys talking that carnish. We all know what you're saying. And so we asked him in, in Carney if, if that were true, then why was he kissing the promoter's butt so much? And we laughed and he laughed and he, he never knew what we were saying. So uh, that, that was that was pretty funny in itself. And it, if you knew the, the characters involved in this, it would be even more funny, but you don't. So we're gonna leave it at that. So that's the, the, the tone for the ride down there. So a couple hours later, we pull up in front of the Atlanta Metropolitan and, and uh, the promoter, is, he's holding the wheel. He says, we're here, boys. Everybody ready? And I, I looked out the window um, and the Atlanta Metropolitan was the Atlanta Metropolitan Federal Prison. <laughs> we're going through these gates to the biggest show of our life to wrestle in a federal prison. We're 19 years old and scared to death. It, our character, the Lightning Express, for you guys that don't know, we, uh, we were like uh, whiny baby boys. And so we were getting ready to go into this. We were the bad guys, their heels, if you will. We were these whiny baby boys and um, uh, mama boy type characters. And we, we pouted when things didn't go our way and things like that. And, and we had a really good time doing that. But now we're doing it inside the Atlanta Metropolitan Prison in front of nothing but um, male prisoners. And, and both of us went on to have a career in law enforcement. But at this time, that we... We, we weren't sure about doing this show anymore, so, but what do you do? I mean, our ride down there was with the ring crew, so we go in and we set the ring up, and then we, we wrestle in front of these guys, and we're getting ready to wrestle, and the promoter brings the referee into the dressing room, and uh, the referee happened to be an inmate that was one of the promoter's friends, and the guy's name was Animal, and Animal was this... Uh, I don't remember if it was a Muppet character or what it was, but it was this this uh, puppet type character back then named Animal. And this guy literally looked just like that character, but he had tattoos all over him and and uh, real mean looking. And you know, he's he's mean mugging everybody in the ring as he's being a referee. He's uh he's really believing that he's a referee at this point, so he, he's trying to maintain law and order, if you will. And uh, we ended up wrestling a promoter and his tag team partner in the semi main event, and. Uh, we were carrying the championship belts at that time for this organization, and we lost that match to let the, for them to win the championship belts. And then we had a main event that was a, a battle royal. Well, the battle royal ended with me and the promoter and in the, being the last two men standing, and I ended up being thrown over the top rope. So the promoter's already beaten us in the, the tag team championship match and then in the battle royal, and then... Um, they were going to do some stuff, and, and we came back into the ring for for them to basically beat us up and make us run away crying for our mama. So we did that. So I've already lost to this guy three times, and uh, he's really um, all about himself winning. And and for some reason, this crowd obviously they were hot. I mean, they hadn't seen live entertainment probably in years. So this is our big show, right, the Atlanta Metropolitan. But but these guys, you know, they didn't have wrestling down there every Monday night like some of the auditoriums and places that we went to on weekends had it every Saturday and different things like that. So they were obviously into the match, you know, it was fun for them. It was a release and escape from the time that they were um, in for. So he was really pumped up by that. And he decided <clears throat> he wanted us to come back out again. So he sends these two guys, one of the ones that happened to be in the front seat on the ride down there into the dressing room to, uh, pull us back out. So we'd already started taking our, our boots off. We, uh, by, we actually had boots by this time. We started taking our boots off and the guys literally come and they're, they're older and bigger guys and they, they start pulling on us. Like, come on, buy, they want you back in the ring. He wants you back in the ring. I'm like, no, man. <clears throat> We've already done the job for him three times. I mean, you know, we're not, we're not going back out there, man. It's ridiculous. We need to go ahead and get out of here. I'm ready to go home. So, they, they find out they just keep pulling on us, keep pulling on us. So I'm like, all right, we'll go out to ringside. So we go out to ringside, and we're jawing back and forth with them, and they're telling us, come on, come on, get on in here. Come on, we're going we're gonna to kick your butts, blah, 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 blah. And I turn my back to the ring for them to uh, 
continue doing what they're doing is I'm telling the crowd, you know, they need to watch their mouth or whatever. And this is when I had really long hair. The promoter reaches over and grabs me by my hair and literally pulls my hair to get me back into the ring. So I rolled back up into the ring and knocked him out. And <laughs> so I knocked the promoter out in the biggest show of our career that happened to be in um, the Atlanta Metropolitan Prison, which wasn't the big building downtown Atlanta that we envisioned with our 19 year old minds. And um, so long story short, we did get our guarantee. For those of you wondering, we got to get our 50 bucks, but um, he didn't really want us to work with him anymore. And it was a long ride home and very quiet. So that is the story of our first big break and our biggest show of the time in the Atlanta Metropolitan and quote unquote, the prison story. I hope you guys enjoyed it and got as big a kick out of it as I did. Um, if you could have been there, obviously it was way more funny. But uh, you guys have a great weekend. Thank you for tuning in. Please comment, like, and share. If there's anything you'd like to hear me discuss on Transformation Talk Tuesday, let me know. And if there's anything um, you'd like to hear me tackle on Freestyle Friday, I'd love to do that for you as well. Um, you guys have a great weekend. God bless. Make it happen.